Good tidings, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome back. You know it's League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beauties as we are. We're finally seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Games are just over the horizon. One more weekend until the World Championship kicks off. And thankfully, we finally got the main appetizer in the 2023 World's Anthem Gods. It was teased as the, you know, miraculous story of depth in DRX in 2022. And that is exactly what we got and lived up to the hype. I'm going to say it. I lived up to my hype. I'm very happy and, and kind of very entertained, of course, with this song, with the music video. The music video is the big hitter, I think, when we're looking at what has come through. Of course, a lot in the style of Rise, arguably the best, if not one of the you know most favorited world's anthems type of song and of course as well with the video that accompanied with it showcasing that journey that climb all those trials and tribulations that deft has gone through until last year's final dance where he gets that trophy gets that championship this song this video it hit right where you wanted it to even knowing that this is of course is the undeniable option that we had to go with to tell this story this year i think people would have been so upset if this wasn't the path they took for this year's Worlds, I think as soon as 2022 ended, they said, well, we got our world song for next year because that, <clears throat> you know, the entire storyline of DRX, absolutely incredible. It feels like it was completely scripted and absolutely they took stuff from Rise because everyone has said, do Rise again. Rise was great. We really liked that. So this was the perfect combo of that. The video, yeah, the animation is on point and so much so that Myself, when I saw it the first time, I've seen other people uh, when they first saw it. You're hardly even listening to the song because there's so much going on in terms of the animation and all the little different story pieces uh, to get through, all the different teams that Deft has been on. I, you know, the one grip, the one nitpick. You gotta have KTIG 2018 in this video. Yeah, that's the one I was waiting for and we never got any type of indication about it a little strange when you're looking at it but one of the things that i think that plays so well into emulating this rise format structure and style for what they're doing with the music video is not only are you showcasing the story of death of course as that main character that we're going through this you're seeing all these other little battles little moments that we remember and recognize of these other players like how cool was it seeing reckless there as the ad cannon down in the bot lane <laughs> raining it down that is the type of stuff Showmaker being the evil mastermind on that Syndra, really recapturing how dominant he was that year. And how many times Showmaker's just Syndra in every one of these little animations. <laughs> He's the full cosplay for him. And obviously, any time Riot can fit Faker into one of these, they're like, yes, that's a big check mark. Love things starting off with the high school run for them. Def's excited about killing Blue Buff. Faker's already solo and barren at this point. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. Not only did we get our Faker dosage, we got multiple appearances from Mr. Faker in this one. We got multiple appearances from Kyria, of course, good friend of Deft and, and tragic story turned against them as an enemy here in the end of it. Deft, this really was, I think, one of the best that we're going to get when we look back and kind of view it as a celebration, a retelling of these stories, of these accomplishments, and that we all enjoy and love and share. We love doing these eventual rankings for all these songs. When you look at the actual song, talking audio, I feel like people have the same gripe every year. And it's, oh, I want this, I want this chorus to slap a little harder. I want this to be a real anthem. I know song specifically wise, I feel like people still like ne Legends Never Die as one of the top ones. They want that super singable chorus. Maybe this one doesn't quite have it, but I mean, the drops, the bass, the 808s are all there. It's just, it's personal preference what you're looking for with one of these world songs. And people have so many different opinions for what they want. Right. And I think when you look at, especially coming off of last year with what they did with Lil Nas X and, and that song where, you know what? A really great song, maybe not a great anthem for a world's type of thing and everything, as we all know, and we talk about from the broadcast perspective, 
Think about how many times you're trying to find that little, you know, 10, 15 second snippet of a hook of a little chorus type of thing that you're linking in between highlights. Every time you're cutting to commercial break, coming back from commercial break, you're going to hear this song. You're going to hear segments of this song a lot. And when I'm thinking about this one compared to what we had last year, I think New Gods is absolutely going to be one that is going to fit that style, that format a little bit better, a little bit more so. But I think that that criticism, that angle of, look, yeah, we really need that chorus to slap. It's got to hit, got to be this arena anthem that everyone wants to join in on. I'm not sure we're quite hitting those levels. And I know there's a ton of New Jeans fans I've seen. Most people saying it doesn't sound like their normal style, this song, and we were talking about this earlier. What happens if KDA does this song? Are people all of a sudden fully happy and just say, yes, KDA, that's exactly what I want. I don't care what KDA does as long as they're doing something. I think there is at least part of it that would get boosted up by that. There just is such an appetite for KDA the way that it you know, translates and connects to things that we see in our world and our culture and things like that. And then how you can implement it with these characters, with these stories that you have attachments to from playing the game, You know, whether you're the one that likes to play it, your friend plays these champions, all those type of things. So KDA has that type of angle and that type of appeal. And I think that is the one that you're keeping in that back pocket. You know you need to hit a slamma jamma of a world song, right? Dial up the KDA number. Now this one was important because Let's go way back to the start of the ranked season and remember how terrible that cinematic video. It, it was like a couple interns were messing around with uh, some AI stuff to move around. And that's how they made this video. People were, <clears throat> we always expect such high standards uh, for these world songs. And it felt like right at the very least hit the mark that we've come to expect with these world songs. And to me, even surpassed it. I think this one delivers, and I think that absolutely it's going to be one over time as you hear it, in, you know, in implemented into the broadcast, into your ad breaks, all these type of things. This song is going to be catchy. It's going to catch into you. You're going to find yourself grooving along to it, vibing, bopping around. This is a good year for a world song. And the other thing to think of is, you know, it's going to be performed at the world finals. So how do we get this on stage? How does this one translate to a live performance? Yeah, that's going to be the one. And from what I've seen, and, you know, I'm not the biggest or most up-to-date fan of New Jeans, but I have heard of that. I have heard of the buzz around them. And I've seen a couple clips of these performances of these type of events. And it is right up there with what we can see and what we have seen in the past from these Worlds events. I'm hoping that there's another notch on that dial of the spectacle for Riot to go with us. Well. The uh, when hosted in South Korea, we know they usually do some pretty insane intros. Even just for the LCK finals, they've gone above and beyond oh, yeah. what we're accustomed to seeing in the LCS. So expecting big things out of this World Finals event. Yes, less than a week, few days until the play-in stage finally kicks off. So we're going to go through this first round of action. Who are the two squads that we're most comfortable saying are going to be advancing to that swish stage and obviously it starts you know i did a little preview of bds versus golden guardians but mark wasn't here so we gotta we gotta get your take how much faith do we have in the guardians which one of these squads number one is even qualifying for the playing stage what i really like about the golden guardians in this comparison and what we look at is obviously something we talked about quite a little bit with the lec was the way that this schedule finished out and why how much you're able to pay play how much you were practicing how much momentum you're building up and keeping going for the squad and then you look at a, a team like bds and the rest of the lec arriving to korea only a few days weeks ago not very much so in comparison a preparation time in comparison to the likes of the Golden Guardians and the rest that have made this journey a little bit earlier, getting themselves acclimated and getting into that practice schedule in this region. That's why I'm giving even just that slightest edge outside of things on the rift towards these Golden Guardians in this matchup against BDS. And I'm still, still banking on that threat, that power that Gory represents in the mid lane for this team to be something that is going to be proactive against this BDS squad and one that I'm not sure that they're going to be able to contain. And listen, both squads, kind of a fleeting end to that summer split, a pair of losses to teams that you probably thought Golden Guardians would get the better of in the LCS. BDS, a more forgivable exit, obviously one of those losses to Powerhouse G2. And I still feel like the ceiling can be higher 
for BDS if they're playing at their very best on any given day um, than the Guardians. I talked about the biggest advantage. Bot lane, Crowny over Stixe is the biggest edge BDS has going here. But the biggest question mark, this is all coming down to the top lane for me. What is Licorice and Adam playing and what level specifically is Adam at? Because you talked about Golden Guardians have been boot capping in Korea for three plus weeks now, whereas BDS just got there this past week, basically. You better believe a player like Licorice getting this type of exposure, this type of practice time against what competition he's facing in that Korean ladder compared to the time in the LCS. This is going to be absolutely a benefit for this Golden Guardian squad. It is going to come down to what they're playing, and I have no doubts that on the side of Adam, it is going to be aggressive. We know that he loves to have that, loves to have that individual advantage in that side and try to pressure, try to build it up, and then spread it out for the squad I think that Licorice is in a good position from what we have seen and how he has developed over the course of this year, which sounds weird to say, of course, about a veteran. But we have seen him return more so to the Licorice that built up the name in the LCS. And, you know, obviously a pretty solid showing for him, even with low expectations at MSI. Hopefully building upon that against Adam and the rest of BDS. Yeah, it feels like he and Stixie, Stixie kind of went opposite directions after MSI. <laughs> Licorice kept on leveling up. Stixie kind of plateaued a level, was more of the middle of the pack ADC uh, in the LCS. But either one of these squads, whoever wins, obviously going to be big favorites against Team Wales, that second seed out of the VCS. Any chance they gave too much in the best of five and fall down to that loser's bracket? I think it's absolutely possible when you're talking about both the, the environment and the type of focus that the LCS and the LEC teams want to put in to this event, and especially that head-to-head -head against each other, trying to get those bragging rights, that type of thing, that situation. I can see that, and we have seen it. You know, doesn't matter the quality of team that you are. You overlook anybody. You don't have that right amount of preparation, and you can be taken advantage of. Team Wales, I think we both have seen uh, you know, a little bit of their players play throughout these Asian games to warm up as well, and certainly going to be a team that is ready and prepared for whoever's coming out of that matchup, Golden Guardians or BDS. I mean, Vietnam, of all the regions, seems to really thrive in that underdog role, and that's <clears throat> absolutely what they're going to be against BDS or the Guardians. When you look at the other teams at this playing stage, again, we've talked about it a bit, but it's all... It's mostly familiar places, you know, Loud, R7, PSG, DFM. These are all teams we've come accustomed to seeing at the international event. If you're assuming Golden Guardians, BDS, the winner of that should be getting through. Yeah, we've seen it happen, not happen in the past with Mad Lions getting through playing stage. But if you assume one of the spots advancing is either of those squads, then you're left with this intriguing GAM versus Loud matchup, which is a rematch from MSI. PSG, obviously, at the forefront. But if you can only pick one of these other squads, it's got to be between GAM and PSG. That's the easy pick. The question is, are we going to get a disappointing performance from GAM again like we did last year's Worlds? And that's the scary thing, because if they do have an underperformance, if they do not get out to that hot, hot on the gas pedal start, a team like Loud is absolutely going to dumpster you and put you out there and take that advantage over top of you. Do need to be careful about Loud. I think that they are a team that is going to, you know, still with some recognition internationally, go under the radar for just the type of damage I think that they are capable of, especially in this play and stage little environment and what they could do. Yes, it should be the Gigabyte Marines versus PSG. And at that point, I'm going with PSG. I think right now what we have seen, especially the resurgence of someone like Maple back to that dominant level of form, and especially in a region uh, you know, like this, where he is able to extend himself above everybody else like that. I think that that's the type of power we're going to see coming through from the PSG mid lane. And there might be a whole party of former and current PSG members. If you get Golden Guardians going far here as well, obviously River and both mm -hmm. Gordy, guys who are accustomed with playing over in the PCS. But again, we've seen the last few international events, a serious leveling up from these minor region squads where it's not out of the ordinary or completely unheard of them taking games off of these either major regions or even squads like the VCS and PCS that we always look at as a tier above. 
and the of course the other thing to, to keep in mind here right away is as soon as we get underway seeing what type of tournament meta is going to start formulating up because of course we're going to be looking through the patch notes everybody's going to have this one this one this one of the champions that you're identifying pick and bands strong options compositional type of strategies type of stuff but what is developing of on the day at this event, which slowly changes people's minds, and then how you counteract that. That's what I'm really, really excited to see come through. And the meta breaks up even, we've seen this time and time again, by different stages. I feel like we're going to get a play-in meta, you're going to get a Swiss stage meta, and then it's probably even advancing when you get to the knockout round, because that's just when guys are playing so many games, you have so many scrims going on amongst these teams too. It evolves throughout the tournament, especially when this is the longest Worlds tournament I think that we've ever had well over a month. That's the other thing that we are dialing up with this new schedule, with this new type of format coming through for Worlds. It's going to be a totally different ballgame for everybody as far as that timeline, as far as that development practice, everything that goes on. And as we've seen, that meta that will develop, it is all about finding these strong little pocket things, these things that you think someone doesn't know about when that gets found out, when that gets showcased, what's the counter? What is the creativity that comes on the other side? Having all this extra time, extra practice, extra scrim, all this stuff, because how spread out it's going to be with this format, you better believe that we are going to get a bit more brewing up in these little uh, batches, these little metas, as you said, play-ins meta, uh, Swiss stage meta, and then as we move into the knockout stage meta. What is going to be the echo jungle of 2023 that we're waiting <laughs> To see no one play because it's underwhelming uh, from across the board. The world song happens. That's how you know it's close. But the world championship doesn't kick off officially for me until we got pickums. The world's pickums this year ever evolving. It's not just picking your teams. We got the crystal ball phase, which I they kind of had last year where you're picking all these other random things. Obviously, some of these are impossible to pick and that's the point uh, that they are impossible to pick but you know standout options for me i always love the pentakill one because it's a lock-in for me there's going to be at least two pentas and one of them's going to be gala that's just how international events work oh man if you know if gala's picking one up that's dialing up a kaisa pentakill yep. if mr gala's gonna be there getting one who's picking up the zeri pentakill of course that has to be the other one on the radar you know what a lot of people easy answer ruler mm. i'm going with the replacement i'm going with your boy pays in that option we saw lots of pentakills from this boy this season certainly seeing that type of hunger that type of aggression needed to pick up those five kills and listen uh you know right once once everyone part of these pickums you know you got rewards you got incentives to watch these matches technically you know although they don't have a great history with some of these drops for Baron steals, and then they yeah. never actually happen. <laughs> I, I think that's good, of course. You know, obviously, any type of little incentive, and it's best, obviously, that interaction of these people that are going to be, you know, in the client and playing the game, playing TFT, playing A Rams, whatever, normals, ranked, all the sorts of games out there for League of Legends and getting that little bit of interaction, a little bit of crossover. Maybe you weren't going to check out one of these games, but you go, hey, that emote kind of want to get that emote i'm gonna check out that game and then oh all of a sudden you're seeing maple popping off and stunting on people and you're going okay this professional league of legends thing i kind of like it so if you you know the big one who's winning worlds that's the ultimate pick them you know we'll have the full bracket figured out and i think you'll still have be able to pick through all of that once the teams are fully finalized but this pick a mark who Who'd you go? You got to pick everyone. Did you go safe? Did you go JDD? Did you go a little hopium? Throw some NRG in there? Maybe throw a, a little... I, 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 I was hovering over NRG. I had big dokes looking over my shoulder. And I was like, oh, man, I can't do this to my boy. But you know what? We're rolling it safe. We're boring. We're losers. It's JDG, the champions all the way through the LPL, the dominant team, Knight, Ruler, Kanavi. Dial me up some of that damage. I'm going with the JDG boys. Yeah, and you know, it's tough because we talked post Asian games and you felt like you should be even more scared of JDG after that uh, performance because number one of how damn good Kanavi looked across the entire tournament especially in that matchup against china and number two how good knight looked 
even in some of these losses for China. Yeah, even in the losses, never mind that third place, the bronze medal game where he, I'm, I, I, you know, you don't want to do this to disparage anybody else, almost single-handedly is winning that bronze medal for China in that situation. I think that the type of form, the type of aggression that we are going to see from those two, which are two mighty key important players for this JDG team, right out of the gate, got a good impression about them. It's tough because so many years you run into that type of question, right? Are you going to go with that favorite? Are you going to take the field? Are you going to find someone else in there that you want to take your bets on? And this year, it's even harder because there are so many legitimate contenders, so many legitimate people that you can consider for these candidates to have these long runs, these interesting runs at Worlds. It's just so hard to go against all the skill, all the talent that you have seen JDG put out on the rift this year. There's basically no weaknesses that you have seen out of JDG the past <clears throat> six months, uh, basically. But in terms of overall storyline uh, for Worlds, it doesn't matter if it's JDG, G, both have countless players that you are desperate to see win a world championship like Knight and Chovy. But there's no way I can see a storyline living up to what we got last year's Worlds. I say that and sure, you can prove me wrong. And if you do, that's that's a win for everybody. Oh, man, it's it's uh, the only storyline I could see being something like that is, of course, the underdog being an LEC or an LCS team making that improbable run towards even semifinals, let's just say, at this type of situation and time will settle for that. Or obviously Faker. That's the big one that a lot of people have that sentimental pull for, want to see him get another championship, another trophy, seeing the way that things went without Faker this year for T1 and then how an immediate turnaround it was with him coming back to the lineup, this would be the perfect year for him to championship himself again with another world's title. There's no shortage of amazing storylines that will play out. But again, 2022 was just absolutely at another level. But either way, can't wait for Worlds to finally kick off. Feels like it's been six months. We've been waiting <laughs> for games to get back on the roof. We are oh so close now. That is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you. Beauties, thanks for watching as always. We'll catch you on that flippity flip.